First of all, there is a prize tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it's part of the talk. So I want you to get excited about that. That's a $5 chocolate bar. <laughs> um, and all of you get to put your names in a hat <laughs> for that. So it's, part of a, it's just such a treat to be here. Uh, thank you for just opening your home. This just feels to me so much better than a formal situation, like a, a big formal room or a classroom. This is just what we do is get together as, as human beings, relate to each other as fellow human beings with all the triumphs and tribulations that exist in that experience. So I just wanted to say thanks. Give a note if you're watching us online. Thank you. <laughs> We're happy that you're here, whatever day, year, or wherever you are, wherever you are. And the famous quote, where love is deep, much can be accomplished. I know that you're busy women, mothers, wives, and have careers of your own. And I know that carving a little time out of your schedule. So I'm very grateful to have that. And when we met before, I'll, I'll retell a story that a few of you have heard, but I was I hadn't had the time to expand on it because our time got cut off. But I started to tell a story about about one year ago. I was hosting the Brain Gym workshop, and right before I'm about to go out the door, I'm like, "Gosh, something looks different." And I thought I had a problem with my contacts, and it wasn't. I was getting a case of blurry vision, and a slight moment of panic, and not quite sure what was going on in my body, and. I'm hosting a workshop <laughs> and I need to leave and I'm living by myself. And somehow the entire incident calmed down and I made it through the day and I knew that actually there was two positions in that workshop that I was hosting so I felt like it was a secure decision. But I knew that could have been a life-changing event. I had just finished reading Stroke of Insight by Jill Bolte Taylor and she, I knew that she had a stroke in her 30s, and I knew that anomalies exist, so my imagination went wild for just a moment. And in those weeks that preceded that, there was such reverence for the smallest details of my life. We're talking driving to the grocery store was a privilege and a special event. It was so incredible, and I thought about things in a way that I never thought about. The whole matrix of my life, my decisions, my parents' decisions, their parents' decisions, our country's decisions. It was just an awe-filled time period. And it lasted about three weeks. And I wanted to explain later today why when we think something is precious and special, how it gives us real power. And I thought I would share a new story that with you today that I think is even more remarkable. There is a man named Wade Davis, and he is National Geographic's Explorer in Residence. What a fun title. <laughs> I love that joke. I know. I think he's one of those people, when you hear him talk, he's almost so special. He probably just gets a title that he's the only person in the world that gets that title. And when you hear him talk, you, you kind of don't know anyone else that, that knows what he does. He goes around the world and explores cultures and their beliefs and their paradigms and their practices. And he shares a story about a culture where... If you're at a young age, if you're chosen to be a shaman in this culture, you're sequestered in a cave until you're 18. So it's two nine-year cycles representing gestation. And in that entire 18 years, you're just told about how the world is so beautiful, how the natural world is full of colors and shapes and sound, and it's miraculous. So that when you actually go out and see it, that's the eyes that you have. And if you just think about it, if we could go into our lives and our world with a little bit of that, that's going to give us a lot of power in the work we do in working with children. Because what we do is not easy, but I assure you it's possible and it is so worthy. So I just wanted to, to start that little seed in your head. Also, we have here, while you're looking at it on the video, we have the chocolate bar. That is the prize for the night. I will pick a prize. And again, all these things are going to hopefully connect the dots for you as we go on. So your packets tonight are designed also with a purpose in them. So you can see that there's a question. We're going to look at four things. There's a question. And you're just welcome to write. I know I'm a person that thinks by writing. I just like to have my hand moving. It's kind of how I stay organized. And if you're that person too, go ahead right away, whatever, whatever works for you in your learning tonight. So um, the next thing I have to give is a disclaimer. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope you notice that I have size 10 shoes on tonight. 
And these are the best size. I can prove that they fit me. I can demonstrate it repeatedly, study after study. And I know it to be true for myself. So that is the disclaimer. Everything we say tonight, you can think this is the this is the perfect fit for our family. There could be somebody on the other side of the room going, that would destroy my child. And a case in point, about 25% of our studio attended uh, Suzuki Institute this last summer. Your family attended, your family attended, you've been there before. It was pretty life-changing for most of those students. I can tell because of the attitudes that came to their lesson. I saw them, I went and observed and saw them, and I hear throughout the year that they retain this information. But for one family, they, it was clear on day one that this was gonna be a pretty damaging scenario for their very young daughter. And they didn't return for the rest of the week. So again, is that an indication this daughter doesn't have potential or talent? Absolutely not. I think it illustrates how unique this is. And as long as I've done this, it's the same music, it's the same instrument, it's a completely unique relationship with every child. So that is my disclaimer for everything that I do, just going forward in there. And now, before this is the introduction here, <laughs> now, I was debating if I call this creating a culture of success or creating a culture of talent. And I think I flip-flopped, I think I advertised it different ways, and sometimes I did both. <laughs> and I'm still undecided, it's November 9th, I don't know, because Talent is success, is talent is success. I think they're pretty interchangeable. And where I back that up is that we're really finding is that what they call 10,000 hours of deep practice. I honestly don't think there's anything special about me and my path. I just put the time in and I had the structure and the encouragement to make something come alive and come out of me. So when we talk about that success and talent, it's so easy, and I do this with myself as an adult all the time. It's so easy to look at another person and their accomplishments and go, yeah, but they had some X, Y, and Z mysterious variable land in their lap. And in most cases, when you get to know people, that's not the case. Usually there was something remarkable or some ignition or some, some event or some support, and there was 10,000 hours of that work. So that's what I, when I say creating a, a culture of success, there is always effort in there, but we'll go in later where this came from was because I, I, I'll tell you my story too, what, where, why this particular presentation came from. But I wanted to just finish to what I mean by culture. So um, academics love describing things. And if you look up the word culture online, you can actually find a 22 page packet of academics describing what is culture. And we all know it, I can say culture. We all know what culture is. But to describe it and to put it into words is, is real, it's, it's an endeavor. And it's a, it's a very fluid definition. We all know, you know, we're talking about that. And so I was just looking into it for this talk. And what I loved, I did the etymology. I loved looking, it comes from a verb, to cultivate, to grow. It's the stuff that we grow in. So I just love that, it's simple. So when we talk about a culture, which is everything. So if we look around this room right now, that's the culture. There's an artistic culture, there's a musical culture, there's an, a welcoming culture, there is an engaging culture, there's an, an, a natural enthusiasm. Just looking on the room, you can't see in the video, but I see a music stand there, I see two violins on the wall. So it's just part of the culture. So, all this stuff. so here's what happened. Here's where this part of the presentation came from. So I went back to school, full of chutzpah, and I was ready, I was ready to spend whatever time it needed to get A's, to excel. I literally, somebody at Fen told me later, they said, you know, we could tell you're a little stressed out because we invited you over for dinner and you emailed us back and said, I'm too busy, maybe in nine months. <laughs> And I'm so glad they reflected that back to me because I really, really put my head uh, in, into a world and did that. But here's where I hit a wall. I always could work hard, was raised to work hard, and actually love working hard. My boyfriend jokes, he says, 
you actually hate fun meat. He does. And in some ways, that, is, that has some truth in it. I'm working <laughs> on that. Um, but, and I would wake up, and I would do all the reading, and I would do all the homework. It wasn't enough. It didn't matter how much I had read, how well I had taken notes, if I had test taking anxiety and I flipped the numbers around. It didn't matter how much work I did if I started having panic attacks in my statistics class, which I did. And it didn't matter any of this if I was just so stressed out that I could just read and it was like, it just was like water off a duck's back. I couldn't even, I could spend hours reading and not even tell you what I read. So I really had to search for that other echelon of life skills, success skills. So, so much of this is I had to look at my own identity. I had a colleague at Lane Community College who was talking to me. She said, you have to identify as being a student. I said, I guess I hadn't done that again. I had been maybe a little unexcited about that element of my life. So I had to embrace that. I had to look at creating a culture. I had to get, I got a new book bag. Things like that were fun. I had to do, get new school supplies, little things like that. And all these things, again, mindsets. I just had to change my mindset about challenge. Find a way, just find a way and find a way and challenge. So all these things have led really to some pretty interesting terrain. And so the last part,